Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Snack Time with Michael Hurst. I am your host, Michael Hurst. Uh, this is the 10th episode, which means we've now been in uh, quarantine social distancing for uh, almost two weeks, if actually more than that. I just started a little late. Um, but thank you guys all for joining. And for those who don't know, I am the author of several books, including Unusual Creatures, and curious constructions and extraordinary people. Uh, and each day I've been reading from one of the books and playing a song that I've written to go with that entry. There are albums that go with these books. And it just seemed like what a great opportunity to help educate and entertain and relieve parents uh, at for a few minutes every day. Um, for today, I want to talk about the great Harry Houdini. I'm sure many of you already know a little bit about Harry Houdini, but there's probably some things about Harry Houdini you don't know. And there's a song that goes with Harry Houdini, and I'm even going to show you a video and some photographs. Um, okay, Harry Houdini, born in Budapest, Hungary, died in Detroit, Michigan, 1874 to 1926. Meet Harry Houdini, the death-defying escape artist and master mystifier who astonished audiences around the world with his escapes from handcuffs, ropes, chains, straitjackets, often while hanging upside down or submerged in a tank of water. You so often see pictures of Houdini hanging upside down because he loved to do tricks hanging upside down. As a teenager, he started performing magic tricks around New York City, first with his friend Jacob Hyman, together they called themselves the Brothers Houdini, and later with his wife Bess Rahner. It quickly became apparent that the escape acts were much more popular than the magic tricks. So Houdini began focusing on such grand illusions as shattering iron chains and wiggling his way out of straitjackets, often while facing nail-biting situations such as dangling high above a sidewalk. And here it should be pointed out that a lot of people think um, of Houdini as a magician. He was not a magician. He, he would never say he was a magician. He was an escape artist, a master mystifier. Um, Houdini was also a master of promotion. On top of all this, he would use these public performances as a means to lure people into a larger theater where he would charge a ticket fee and then perform his real tricks. With extensive touring and a lot of press, Houdini became the most famous magician in the world. And here it says magician again, but it really should be a escape artist. While on tour in 1926, Houdini was backstage talking to a couple of college students who asked him if it was true that he was able to withstand any punch to the stomach. Yes, he said he could, if he had time to properly prepare his muscles. Unfortunately, one of the young men struck him several times before he was ready and ruptured his appendix. Oof. Although he performed the show that night, no doubt in a lot of pain, uh, a few days later, he was hospitalized. His appendix was removed, but it was too late. A bad infection had set in, and Harry Houdini died on ha Halloween night in 1926 at the age of 56. I am always being asked how did Houdini die, and that's the story. It's sad that he died on Halloween night. Um, to this day, people still wonder how some of Houdini's tricks worked. But as he always said, it wasn't about the tricks. It was about his hard work and his imagination. And to this day, there hasn't been a magician greater than Harry Houdini. So that's the story of Houdini. And uh, yeah, so one of his tricks was that he could tighten his muscles and he said he could handle any punch. But this uh, college kid punched him before he was ready. And um, it's we don't know for sure, but it's speculated that, in fact, that was uh, what ruptured his spleen and... He went on. He actually, as I mentioned, he went to perform another show in massive pain. He refused to go to the doctor and he went to the show and performed and with a fever and everything. And, and uh, after the show, he then went to the hospital and then uh, soon thereafter died. But um, that, uh, yeah, <laughs> there you have it. How's that for a kid's story? But wait, was it the punches to the stomach that took down the great Houdini? There is now speculation that Houdini was already suffering from early stages of appendicitis when the incident occurred. Hmm. Well, whatever the case may be, multiple blows to the gut certainly didn't help. Youch. Okay, so, and there's the appendix in case you uh, 
were curious where it was. Uh, these illustrations are by the great Aaron Skimmer, Skimmerhorn, uh, who noticed this book is printed upside down, which is why it's my copy and why it's extraordinary. Okay, I have a little section here called Name That Escape Artist. Houdini was born Eric Weiss. He changed his last name to Houdini in tribute to one of his heroes, Jean Eugene, Jean Eugene Robert Houdin, known as the father of modern magic. His first name, and I'm sorry if you're a uh, magic aficionado and I just butchered that name. Um, uh, his nickname was Airy. Incidentally, at the time, some people thought that adjust, adding an I to the end of a, ma a name was a popular way to, to pay tribute to earlier magicians. So yeah, Houdini, it was named after a guy named Houdin, and he just added an I, Houdini. <laughs> I suppose if you wanted to pay tribute to Houdini, you could change your name to houdini E. That's my form of a joke. And now I have here um, who did a little poem. I love to write poems in my books, which then often turn into lyrics. So this is who did who did it? Houdini did it. That's who did it. And the uh, poem is Houdini did it. There he goes. How'd he do it? No one knows. Did he pick the locks with just his toes? His secrets he shall not expose. Houdini escaped again, I hear, from underwater without scuba gear. Held his breath for three minutes. Oh, dear. The crowds gave him a roaring cheer. So I'm going to show you um, an actual photo of Houdini because there are many. And uh, this is this is one of my favorites. Let's see if you guys can see this. Oh, dude. You know what? I'm going to shut this curtain. This is how we do it in uh, live, live Facebook time. Um, here's another one that I really like. Without the glare, where's the glare? There we go. It's all about the angle, right? And holding it still. Um, so now I'm going to try to play you the Houdini song. When we do this live, Alyssa Lamb is the voice of Houdini. She sings this, and she has such a beautiful voice. Um, but she is uh, socially distancing, isolating in Minnesota. So I'm going to try to sing this. See if I can do it. Houdini did it. There he goes. How'd he do it? No one knows. Did he pick the locks with just his toes? His secrets he shall not expose. Look up there. Not worth trying, his tricks worth death defying. Leave that stuff for Harry Houdini. Houdini escaped again, I hear. From underwater without scuba gear, held his breath for three minutes. Oh dear, the crowds gave him a roaring cheer. Way up there, it's Harry Houdini. In that box is Harry Houdini. At home, it's not worth trying unless you're set on dying. Leave that stuff for Harry Houdini. So, yeah, those are just the lyrics from the book. Um, so, here's what I'm going to do now. This is this is going to be a challenge, but I think we're going. I'm going. I can make it happen. I am going to try to play you a video from my phone of Houdini doing one of his escapes. While I perform the recording of the song with Alyssa singing, um, this is like an escape trick in itself, an illusion in itself. Let's see, I got to turn that up. Will there be a loop? Let's see. I'm going to put this microphone on the speaker. Uh, let's see if this happens. Let's try. All right, hitting play. 
hitting play here. An actual escape by Houdini. I pull that off. I have no idea. Oh, look who's watching. Thank you, Hans and Car Val, Carney Val, Michael Glass, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope everyone is hanging in there. Uh, I know these are tough times for everybody. We're doing what we can. Um, so all the other episodes are uh, posted to YouTube, and um, I'm going to keep doing this so long as I can. Big thanks to Jason Bittner and Dan Miller for helping to put this idea together, and to my wife, Kelly, and to my son, Nathan who are doing homework in the other room, and to Julian and Julie Landau, who are so kind to let us stay in their house up here in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Uh, so much more room, so much happier. And uh, big thanks to Harry Houdini and to all of you for tuning in and watching this. I'll see you guys again soon. Love you all.